up, you know, I was a California Jew. And uh, in, in, a, in a conservative synagogue. And it wasn't reform, it was conservative. But uh, I don't think I ever in my life doubted that there's one God. It was, it was just obvious. In fact, when I was looking for God, I was studying world religions. I was, I was in Berkeley and, and I had come to a serious decision that I have to find God, I have to understand God, that's what it's all about. After I, you know, I was, spent a summer in Europe, 1968, the age of 20, and I was 20, I was 19, you know, I, I, I kind of went off a cliff on a motor, motorcycle and survived and got, you know, held up at knife point in uh, Tangiers and somehow talked my way out of it and went to the Arctic Circle and <laughs> so I, you know, I had all these adventures and and uh, and after all this, I, I just decided that you know loved and lost and and so after after after, <laughs> after all these experiences, I actually I remember that I, I was in a train. I was coming back from North Africa, which I uh, of course I was in Tangier, so it's like a border town. But I found it a little like uh, no, I don't think I'll spend much time here. <laughs> and so I, w I was taking a train back to Madrid to get another train to Paris. And on the train, there, and there was, I remember there was, a, there was this nice guy, about my age, he was a, an artist from Paris. And he just somehow liked me, wanted to travel with me. So, I, you know, we were traveling together. Although he didn't have enough money to go to North Africa, so I went alone. But, um, so it was on the train, I still remember, I, I was a writer, you know, I was like this intellectual and writing, and I was... And so I remember writing in my journal, like coming decision that I am going to try to understand God and that is now the purpose of my life. That's what it's all about. Because I realize everything else is just superficial and if I don't know what God is, I really don't know anything. So I came to that decision. And then I went back to the university. I had to stay in school because there was a Vietnam War going on and I was too young to get my throat cut in a jungle. <laughs> and so, although there's really no good age for that. so. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to stay in school and but I remember that became my life project to find God and every morning I'd wake up and you know I had to walk to campus and, and I remember every morning I just as I was walking to campus I was just meditating you know what is God trying to understand and actually I gradually discovered that God is in the heart I actually I mean I was doing like consciousness and just trying to find God and I talked to all these different preachers because Berkeley was just like a cosmic circus. It was like that bar scene in Star Wars. <laughs> Except, I mean, it really was. I mean, all those creatures were there in Berkeley at the time. So. <laughs> and I was talking, you know, I mean, I went to the Hillel, you know, the Jewish thing. I even talked, I, I had become so liberal and, you know, so wild. I even talked to Christian preachers and, and I was talking to everybody. Like, okay, tell me your best knowledge. And, and I was just like, I had no concept of sectarian religion. And, you know, like there's false gods and real gods and there's, you know, the false religions. I mean, I wasn't thinking that way. I was just looking for God. And so it was so intensely. And then after a few months of just looking, 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 I was walking home one day. I lived on this beautiful street actually called Piedmont near the campus. And someone came up to me and said, uh, a devotee came to me and said, our guru is going to speak tonight. So can you come? And when I heard that, my first thought was, oh no, another Swami. Because when I was, eight, when I was 18 years old, I took a, a class, sociology, like beginning sociology. And so it was one of those little, you know, little freshman classes, we had to go around to all these different religions like Catholic, Protestant, Jewish, like Buddhist, Hindu, and just write a little report. It's, you know, one of those little classes. And so for the Hindu side, I went to hear the Swami. And uh, anyway, I was, I went with the, uh, my significant lady friend. And so we went to this, we went to this program and, um, it was, this, it was a Swami in a saffron robe, and he just sat there, and he just, because I really wanted knowledge. Like, if you know something, say it. I had no patience for esoteric mystic. If you know it, just say it. And so he started saying, like, in this high voice, 
everything is all right. <laughs> there is no problem. Relax. <laughs> and he just kept saying that and things like that and there was no like philosophy. And so, I mean, I was young, I was 18 years old and, and I was 18 and so I, I almost burst out laughing. Because <laughs> yeah, I started, I, I remember I was there with a girl and I started drawing funny pictures and, and I literally, I, I, I was all, I almost, I almost lost it. And so, you know, there were like some adults there. I was that, definitely not an adult. And um, so these, <laughs> these adults were turning like, shh, shh. Because I, I could hardly, you know, when you're young, you just can't see. <laughs> so then, um, so then, two years later, when they asked me, "Hey, come and hear our guru," you know, Swami, I thought, "Oh, is this gonna be another one of those." <laughs> but I liked the devotees. I liked. I just knew the devotees. I thought anyone who would shave their head and go out in public must be very sincere. <laughs> And so, <laughs> so I walked in, and those days, that was, that was, this is 1969. You know, it was just, everything was like experience and consciousness, and so, so when I walked in, I wanted to experience it. Like, if I'm gonna go there, I wanna experience it. And so it was in this, uh, anyway, this is beautiful little hall, and I walked in with some friends. We walked in and um, everyone, they, everyone sat down in the chairs and I told my friends, no, I really want to, I want to experience this. So I walked up to the front and sat down on the floor with the devotees. And, um, and then Prabhupada came in. And as soon as I saw him, I just knew, oh, this is very serious. Because Prabhupada, <laughs> he came in, he's probably surrounded by, you know, Vishnu Jana Swam, uh, he wasn't saying Vishnu Jana and Tamal Krishna actually. And so he was surrounded by these devotees and my first impression, the first time in this life I saw Prabhupada was, he is like a commander. I mean, I just knew this person has authority. And in those days, we didn't think anyone had authority. Our parents, is that a joke? <laughs> Our professors, clueless. I mean, no one had a, the government. That's a bad joke. So, I mean, for us, no one had authority. But as soon as I saw Prabhupada, I knew he has authority. This, he just seemed like he walked like this, like this natural commander. And that was my first impression. And then Prabhupada came and there was a little stage set up. He sat on the Vyasa Asana, which in American Sanskrit is the Vyasa San. <laughs> so he, he sat on the Vyasa Asana and... Um, and the kirtan started. I didn't just tell you the story before, did I? No. The kirtan started, and you can imagine the devotees. I mean, they were all young. They were all my age. They were just like, you know, 20, 21, 22, or like that. And, be and because Prabhupada was there, they were just so ecstatic. They just began dancing. And I was, I had never experienced ecstatic religion. You know, I just went to the synagogue and, <laughs> Shema Yisrael, thank you, now sit down. And so... You know, just like this nice, sedate service. I mean, I loved the singing, the cantor. It was beautiful. I loved it. I still do. But, but this was ecstatic. The devotees were, were dancing and jumping. And then Prabhupada got up off his seat and, and began dancing and jumping. And then I thought, I thought, oh my God, this is... I just knew that I was witnessing something extraordinary because at that time, that was 1969, early 69, Prabhupada was um, 72 and a half years old. Which at that time, I mean, you know, at my age of 20, 72 and a half was like 7,930. <laughs> and so, and, and so when Prabhupada started dancing, the devotees went berserk. I mean, the devotees just went completely mad with ecstasy. And I remember I was in the middle of it and I just saw bodies flying all around and <laughs> leaping. And, and I was right in the middle of it and I was just like, <laughs> and I, I always tell this story because it's true I remember there was one moment when I actually became completely disoriented it, it's like Arjun says in the Gita when he sees the universal form Dishonajane, I no longer know what the directions are like what's up, what's down and I actually thought to myself are the devotees on the floor on the ceiling, or on the walls or, I just saw these bodies flying all around me 
<laughs> and um, and I, to be honest, was not that ecstatic. I mean, I was chanting, and but but then in my heart, Krishna told me. I mean, I actually understood in my heart that these people are actually practicing. They're following principles. What are you doing? You're just a, you know, you're just just a you know hog you're just trying to enjoy the world and so i knew i didn't deserve it i knew that i wasn't feeling the ecstasy because i hadn't earned it somehow i understood that and so 